uh, but by examining, trying to find out uh, what does it really mean, what is it really all about, uh, does it fit with the system as a whole, etc., etc. So there is no contradiction between faith and uh, reasoning, knowledge, trying to disco discover things. And we have to find some kind of a harmony uh, between them because they support one another. Building on that, can, how can how can someone know? Okay, so he grew up he grew up within whatever religion it is. He he was brought up. How does he know that his is there something telling that his is better than his is truer than the other religions out there? Means the other the other religions peddling their their beliefs. Okay. Um, this is an issue of as we discussed also last time, what I would call consistency. What means consistency? You make judgments about everything in life. And in everything in life, certainly where it matters to you, where a lot is at stake, where your money is at stake, your health is at stake, your safety is at stake, etc., etc., you examine things and you accept certain criteria, you accept certain standards. Once you have accepted a certain standard in one context, then you cannot say, well, this standard doesn't suit me in this context. Uh, for example, um, if I would reject uh, the simple faith in what somebody tells me, just because some Tom, Dick, or Harry, a street corner, street corner preacher, comes and tells me, you know, uh, you want to go to heaven, <coughs> you have to do this, you have to do that, etc. <coughs> Normally all of us <coughs> would simply shrug our shoulders. The person may be very charismatic, and therefore you may be influenced by him, not because of the argument, the content of the argument, but because of his personality. But that is not really examining what he's saying. That is simply letting yourself be couch out and uh, influenced by somebody that you like, or you may like the message. It appeals to you. It appeals to your sentiments, it appeals to your prejudices, whatever it is. That is not an open-minded judgment. And the average person uh, would not simply accept. This very same person may accept the argument of a street corner preacher. Street corner preacher A. Or let's take a simple example. Um, here in New York, my young days when I learned here, there was a big hospital, Kings County Hospital, still around. Um, and Kings County Hospital was known in my days uh, more so than Bellevue Hospital. All the hospitals known for its psychiatric ward. Kings County used to be known for that as well. So the an insult to somebody was, you belong in Kings County. Uh, something to that effect. In Kings County, if they still have a psychiatric ward, which I assume they do, and certainly Bellevue, down in Manhattan, uh, they have a special ward. Uh, they have a special ward where people who claim that God speaks to them, that God reveals himself to them, uh, that these revelations of God... Um, are shown great respect. They get free room and board. Um, you have to work for a living. You have to pay rent. You have to buy your food. They get free room and board for as long as it takes. Now, uh, there are lots of people like that in these hospitals. And each one claims that God spoke to them. If you give them a lie detector test, guess what? They will pass it with flying colors. Which means they're telling the truth. Lie detector tests are accepted in, co in some courts. Um, so they're telling the truth. So therefore, you have to take them at face value for what they say. So now I want to find out, wow, this is a great person. God himself revealed himself, himself to them, spoke to them. So I go into room number one, I ask them, tell me, what did God tell you? And he will tell me, God told me to tell you that next time you daven, make sure you stand straight, feet together, hands folded neatly, and eyes closed, and uh, daven is kavana. I go into room number two and he tells me, next, God told me to tell you, next time you're down, make sure you dance all around the room and clap your hands. In the third room, they'll tell me, make sure you make some headstands to the davening. Turn up, upside down to show that the world is really an up, upside turvy uh, place. Which means in every room, I'll get a different message. Now, each one of them passed the lie detector test. So each one, technically speaking, is telling the truth. But obviously something is wrong here. And if you accept now, let's say, I like the message in room number one. It appeals to me. 
it makes sense to me. But all I have to go on that, to accept its truth, is that man's word for it. Because he says, God spoke to me, and God told me to tell you that. That's the only standard that I have for accepting that that is the real truth. But what he says is exactly the same as what the man in number, room number two says. Which is exactly the same as the man in room number three says. So if I accept number one, technically, to be honest and to be consistent, I would have to accept also what number two and number three, and number four, and number five, etc., etc., also say. But then, of course, I'll, they will lock me up. I'll go crazy because they're all mutually exclusive. But the standard is the same. So you can't say that I accept X. Why? Because so and so told me. So and so will tell you something else. Why do you believe him? Why don't you believe him? So here likewise, when it comes especially to religion, you have to ask yourself, what is the basis of my religion? If it's merely, you know, that's what my parents practiced, uh, then the most you can argue for it is fiddle on the roof, tradition. That's it. So there are other traditions. We have our traditions, Christians have their traditions, the Indians have their traditions, uh, the, the, the Hindus have their traditions, the Buddhists have their traditions, etc., etc. Um, so then indeed, yes, go ahead, you can switch. I don't like, we can say, well, you should be faithful to your tradition, to your fealty, to your ancestors. Why? What do I owe my ancestors? Just because they did it. Their ancestors didn't do the same thing. Once upon a time, they had different traditions in ancient times. So therefore, it's simply be, um, because that's what I've been doing. Well, you, that you can switch. So if that is the standard, the foundation of your religion, then indeed there's no way to you have no way of knowing, you're not speaking about truth, you're simply dealing with a tradition in this particular context, which has no more value than any other tradition. If, however, your foundation is, especially when it comes to religion, religion is not just simply about, I believe in God, I believe in revelation, I believe, sorry, I believe in God, I believe in creation, um, and I believe there has to be a relationship with God, uh, that's all fine and good. But just because you believe in all these things does not mean that you now know what is your relationship to God and what is God's relationship to you. The only way to find out what is God's relationship to you and your relationship to God, only one can possibly tell you that that's God himself. So therefore, in a religion we assume without revelation there is no such thing as religion. Any religion that is not based on revelation is, not, is playing games as words, semantics. It's not religion. It's simply what I have adopted, a lifestyle, a way of life. So if I have a revelation, then the question is, what is your revelation based on? What claim, what makes you so sure that, in the case of the Jew, the Torah is from God, in the case of the Christian, the New Testament is from God, in the case of the Muslim, that the Quran is from God, in the case of the, the Hindus, that the Bhagavad Gita or the, or the Vedas are from God, etc., etc. So, if you say, well, that's what I've received throughout the generations... Well, they have received that throughout the generations also. That's, you know, it's a blank, it's something that somebody grabbed out of midair. If in Judaism we claim the foundation of our belief in revelation is a public revelation, not some individual coming and claiming that God spoke to him, there's no way you can ever test that. There's no way you can ever verify that. And if you believe any one man or any group of men who claim that God spoke to him or them, then you have to believe every other group, like in the example with the hospital. If you're not prepared to do that, then you have to reject the one that you have as well. Can't have it both ways. It's all or nothing. So, here we have to ask ourselves simply, uh, what is our foundation? So for the Jew, the foundation is, it is not that Moshe came and said, God spoke to me. It's not that some other prophet came or that Moshe performed all these miracles in Egypt, and that's why we believe in Moshe. That's not the foundation of Judaism. The foundation of Judaism is the revelation of Sinai, where the revelation was a public revelation, not to an individual who passed it on to others, hearsay evidence, not even that, it's even less than that, but something which was experienced by every one of Shishim Ribo Yish, of 600,000 men between the age of 20 and 60, so not counting those below 20, those over 60, not counting their wives, not counting all the schleppers that came along with them from, from Israel, from Egypt, which means you have a minimum of approximately 3 million people. 3 million people who claim to have had an identical experience. Somebody wants to know where were you tonight? Tuesday night, March the 11th, 
2008, what were you doing? Oh, I went to the Maple Street show in Crown Heights. We have this fellow, which we like, Abbe Verdi, and he brought us together. He says, we're going to have here a session with questions and answers about matters of faith, about matters of Torah. Come on, I know you better than that. Which nightclub did you go to? <laughs> Which uh, theater or movie how did you go to? Come on, I know you. I, I, I know you from, not from yesterday. I know where you are at and I don't know what you enjoy. You're not going to sit down here, come on a simple weekend and just waste time sitting down, talk about religion, faith, it's, uh, philosophical issues, etc. Give me a break. Oh, I really was really there. I don't believe you. Well, he saw me there. Him? <laughs> Big deal. He's a friend of yours. You're working in collusion. Um, and you probably paid him off. Uh, you gave him something, gave him another bottle of beer so you, to say whatever you want him to say. Uh, so you say not just him Abbe Verdi will say oh, Abbe Verdi because he wants you to come to his shoe and it isn't that so therefore he's also going to play along with you he doesn't want to aggravate you so if you tell him just certain one individual two individuals even three individuals it becomes questionable how do I know it's, it was really there if you're going to give me a list of all the names of all these people here the more names you can mention me and uh, I can examine them cross examine them uh, the more uh, credible what you say becomes if you have your two dozen people and each one verifies, yes, we saw him there at the Maple Street Show on Tuesday evening, then for all practical purposes, I have to accept that. This is what happens in every court of law. In a court of law, you also get the option then of cross examining the witnesses. Is it possible the witnesses false witnesses? Has it happened only once that uh, you know, the people commit perjury? Uh, with one, two, three, it's very likely. And even there, the court really has no choice unless somehow in cross-examination you can trip them up, you can show for other reasons that they are not really credible, then the testimony can be thrown out. But if I cannot trip them up and everyone verifies exactly the same as what the other one says, I have no choice but to accept it. Is it 100% full proof, absolute beyond the shadow of a doubt proof? No, I can possibly talk about mass hallucination, maybe I have the art of... Uh, mass hypnosis and uh, put something in your coffee and uh, all of you and uh, therefore you think that you experience that uh, who knows what but for all practical purposes uh, on the day to day existence of life you have no other choice that's exactly what happens in any court of law so this is the foundation of Judaism when it comes to Christianity or practically every other religion besides Judaism Judaism is the only religion in the world that makes a claim of public revelation other religions could have made the same thing, but they had, they had no basis, they had no foundation, they had no source for that. So Christianity accepts public revelation. Islam accepts the public revelation of Sinai. They both accept that. Except what they claim, yeah, but after that, God kind of revised. You know, there's Windows 95, there's Windows 2000, there's Windows 2002. So there's the Old Testament, New Testament, New New Testament called Quran, and New 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 Testament called Book of Mormons, etc., etc., etc. I've dealt a lot with missionaries and cults. Once upon a time I used to argue with them and show them how all the arguments they call that this policy, they call that policy, they don't know what they're talking about. So they will counter to me, yeah, that's your interpretation, the rabbinic interpretation. But there's another way of looking at it as well. And you get to a standoff. And it's not my head against the wall, it's based on just what we Jews have been doing for thousands of years whenever we have been confronted. Until I hit upon a simple idea that I don't have to go into that and you don't have to study the whole Tanakh in order to refute the missionaries. But now a Christian comes to me and says, why can you not accept, you know, a New Testament? I say to him, you know, I will let you answer that question. I don't care what you say, but I'll let you answer that question. Yeah? Very good. How? He says, I'm going to ask you a question and your answer is going to be my answer. Tell me, why do you not accept the Quran? The Christians say, tell me, why do you not accept the Quran? They will look at me, are you crazy? How could you compare? The Quran is a, a phony book, satanic verses, and Muhammad was a false prophet. And I say, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> whatever they're going to say about the Quran, whatever they're going to say about Muhammad, is exactly what I say about them. <laughs> And to the Muslim, I'll say exactly the same thing. Tell me why you do not accept Buddhism. Tell me why you do not accept that. I can say that to every other religion. And they're going to try and answer this. Yeah, 
Quran, Quran doesn't conform to the Bible.